Good afternoon, everyone. Long-term forecast, Canadian government, extreme cold from a blocking high over North America, Asia, and Europe through this winter. Now we need to couple in a VEI 5 or 6 eruption from Shivalush, Kamchatka Peninsula, Russia. Magnetic poles are still wandering. I guess you could do a volcano selfie. This VEI 5 or 6 eruption, this is a game changer. Volcanic aerosols, this is going to be a winter. You will never forget how cold it's going to be. The blocking pattern in itself would be enough, but add in the volcanic ash and aerosols. You're without a summer. Imagine it starts now this winter. You're going to need to learn how to sprout, grow your own food as we move through this next season. Trueleafmarket.com, heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on the planet. If you're looking for the volcanic eruption to change our society, this is very well it right here, right now. Welcome to the new world we're entering with crop shortages already. And now we have this major eruption in the Northern Hemisphere. And the headline says it all. Monster eruption, Kamchatka Peninsula. Ash up to 70,000 feet plus, confirmed. And I said, really? I thought the corporate media would have jumped on this and been all over it. Oh, it's global warming. It's going to have some effect on the climate. Uh, yeah, it is. It's going to have a cooling effect. That's why they're not talking about it, because how are they going to weave this into the narrative here? Runaway global warming, yet this single eruption is going to drop northern hemispheric temperatures. Here we are, Shibaluj Volcano, Volcano Discovery. This is an excellent source. Come here first to double check to see if there's truly eruptions or some activity. They follow earthquakes as well. Sure enough, 70,000 foot plume. So where is this exactly? Kamchatka Peninsula, you've heard of it. Where is it? North of Japan, going toward the Arctic Circle. Ash, ash, ash everywhere you look. And just about two weeks ago, there was another 47,000 foot eruption. And you can see that from the Homari 8 satellite. Now, also taking a look here at the magnetic polar wander. I talk about this in my presentation. Winter is coming. We can see where the magnetic poles are moving in that direction, but not directly over Kamchatka. So is it an outlier? Yes. Is it because of the magnetic polar wander? Mm, hard to say. But I will say one thing. The North Pole is definitely not the North Pole anymore. It is moving and continues to trek 50 to 60 miles, that's one degree latitude per year now. That would explain a lot of the weather changes that we're having. But remember, go have some fun during all this tumultuous time. Volcano selfie. This will be one of the last opportunities in our current civilization for you to take advantage of international travel, abundant food supply, being able to just go on holiday, relax, chill out, swing in a hammock and forget your worries because next year in 2021, Wow, things are going to change so swiftly. You'll get a good indication this year with the cooling in terms of the blocking high and the volcanic ash and the aerosols, how we're going to cool. Jumping over here to the Canadian SIPS. It's a long-term forecast for blocking highs, or it could be a low as well. That's over the Arctic Circle. What they do is they give a longer-term forecast on how the pressure systems are going to affect the winter or the summer coming up. Obviously, we're heading into winter, so... Blocking high means exceptional cold, displacing cold air over North America, Asia, and Europe. But of course, it's going to be blamed on global warming. Couldn't be a natural, couldn't be anything natural. Has to be CO2. So look out for the CO2. Wow, bandwagon. The blocking high, it's because of CO2. Uh, they saw this back in the late 1970s. So if we're going to get in a 1970s weather pattern, buffalo blizzard, etc., extreme cold across Chicago, uh, we might see a 2.0 this winter coming up. So what does blocking high look like? I've turned it on its side so we can get a wider depth of view here. North Pole is actually to the right there where the east would be. You can rotate it yourself if you want to save the screen grab. We can see how the blocking high pressure is going to push and displace the air and continue to force colder air down south. They're already looking at extreme cold across the east coast of the U.S., over Japan, Taiwan, and eastern China as well as parts of Europe. So anytime we get extreme cold, they're gonna blame it on CO2 because of the blocking high. You can, I can already write the headline in advance, what we're gonna see in the media. And I talk about this in the presentation I did, winter is coming, cycles of change and transition. It's a full one hour and 10 minute MP3 that accompanies 100 plus slides. 
explaining pictures with a little bit of commentary in there and you can get a better visual representation of how I see, along with so many others, how this unfolding of the grand solar minimum along with volcanic eruptions that we just had talked about six, eight months ago that we're gonna to start to uptick and we get into the VEI 5-6 range and then look for a VEI 7 and when you see that, absolutely the very next winter we will have, well, the coldest temperatures in hundreds and hundreds of years, but our crops will be right along with that, the lowest yields in hundreds of years. So they do go hand in hand. Presentations listed in the description box below, the links there, you can take a look at that. I appreciate your support. It's another way to support ADAPT2030 and myself, David Dubine here, and I will see you next video. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the information.